Hey everyone, welcome back to Ape Seymour Strip Off. Today, I'm super excited to show you how to set up and use AI models in chatbots right on your local machine using the Open Web UI initiative. And you know the best part? You don't need any programming experience to get started. First, let's talk about what Open Web UI is. Open Web User Interface, it's an open source project available on the GitHub website and it allows you to deploy and use AI powered chatbots locally on your machine. And this means you have full control over a chatbot without relying on external servers. The Open Web UI project is a significant advancement in the realm of AI powered chatbots providing users with an accessible and versatile platform for leveraging sophisticated large language models locally. One of its standout features is the ability to utilize ready-made large language models available on Alarma, ensuring high quality conversational capabilities out of the box. Additionally, Open Web UI supports downloading GGUF models from the Hugging Face website, offering a wide range of pre-trained models for various applications. This project is particularly valuable for its capability to function as a retrieval augmented generative chatbot, allowing users to query and interact with their own documents effectively. Furthermore, it supports referencing multiple models, giving users the flexibility to switch between AI models based on specific needs or preferences. By bringing together these diverse functionalities, Open Web UI empowers individuals and organizations to create robust, customized chatbots without needing extensive programming knowledge, thus democratizing access to advanced AI technologies. And before we dive in, let's go over the requirements. You will need Open Web UI from GitHub, Alarma for downloading and managing AI models, Docker Desktop to run chatbots in separate containers. The first requirement for a system to work is Alarma. Alarma is a piece of software which allows the deployment of large language models locally on your machine. You can go to the website alarma.com forward slash download in order to download Alarma. It's available for macOS, Linux and Windows. Alarma features a wide variety of large language models as you could see here and you can download them locally to your machine. So let's look at an example, Llama 3. When you click on it, it's going to give you here all the variants. So if I'm going to say give one a download, the instruct model, you click on it and then you copy that line of code and then you go into a common prompt that you open and then you paste it. I do possess that model and you can view all the models that you have downloaded using the code Alarma list. As you can see here, I have a wide variety of the models that I have downloaded. You really need a couple of the models to be downloaded. The first one is an embedding model. So there are a couple of them embedding models that are quite useful to download. So all mini LM and also Nomic embed text. You'll have to download a couple of them large language models in order to do testing and the likes. So Llama 3 is a very good option. A Mistral version 0.3, which is the latest, is a very good option. Moving on to the second requirement of our system is Docker Desktop. Docker Desktop is an application that makes it easy to develop and run containerized applications on your local machine. It works well on both Windows and Mac OS, providing tools like Docker Engine and Docker Compose to manage and run containers. With Docker Desktop, you can ensure that your applications run consistently in different environments, making development and deployment smoother and more reliable. It's a must-have tool for developers looking to streamline their workflow and create scalable applications. Having understood what Docker Desktop stands for, it's now time to dive into how to install it on our machine. So go to the website docker.com and you'll be greeted with a quick and brief description about what Docker can do as highlighted before. If you go up top to products in the pane up top and then go to 
Docker desktop. You click on it and then you can download it easily for Windows. And then you follow the instructions in the installation panel window that's going to appear to you. And then the last piece of the puzzle is to get OpenWebUI installed. So in order to access OpenWebUI, you're going to have to go to github.com forward slash open dash webui forward slash open dash webui. I'm going to be putting the link in the description of this video. And then you'll see up front at the top the list of the folders, files and subfolders that we use to develop such project. And then if you scroll down, you will find the explanation provided by the Open Web UI team and you will find the strength of the tool itself and what it does, the limitations, the features and the likes. So if you scroll down a little bit, you will find that there are instructions about how to install. So if you have a Llama and you don't have a GPU, you just have a CPU, or if you have a GPU but you don't want to use it, you can copy and paste that com command and then you can open command prompt and then paste that command in here. I've done that already and I'll show you in a bit. If you have a GPU and you want to make the best use of it, then use the third command. Having installed Docker Desktop, and now we are ready to deploy OpenWebUI. So as we have explored in the last step that we can deploy OpenWebUI using either the CPU or the GPU, we can also deploy it using Ulama support. So we take a copy of that line of code, and then we go to command prompt, and then we, we paste it, and then we can edit the name in here, to be GPU so that we make a difference between the GPU and the CPU and the local port is going to be 308080 and then once you hit enter Docker Desktop will open and I have done this step here open-webui-gpu so when I click on that one the first time you're going to be greeted with a sign up the sign up itself it's I'm not sure why they did that it's not on the cloud it's literally on my local uh, machine I have pulled in some models here so let's explore the interface together so on the top you can find what model you want to deploy so you, I have just three models a llama lava a mistral and I have downloaded two embedding models just for, for my own benefit if you click on workspace you can customize the, the prompts themselves. You can explore custom prompts. You can also add whatever documents that you want. I'm going to be exploring that in a bit. And you can have your own playground where you put in custom prompts and the likes. So let's explore the chatbot using Llama 3. So you can either click on here and then choose Llama 3 or you can click here at and then choose the model however for the first model here or the default model we have to choose it so let's say that we're going to be choosing llama 3 and then we're going to be talking here to llama 3 and then we can ask a question um for argument's sake i'm working in a construction consultancy and i am preparing a bid report for a client working in the energy sector give me an outline of the bid report that I should be doing for this client for a project that will be undertaken in the south west of England for argument's sake and then I press enter it's going to take a little bit of time just in the first message because it's deploying the large language model on the GPU so as you could see here the the response itself is instantaneous I wrote the question or the prompt and I'm waiting for the response and as you see it's instantaneous and depending on uh, your GPU and the available infrastructure whether on your PC or on the local server because Again, Open Web UI can be deployed using Docker in an organization, and then employees can get 
access to it uh, through some sort of like a, a local host or a specific URL. And as you can see here, the result itself is so detailed uh, beyond any doubt. And we're going to be even augmenting the response right now um, because Open Web UI provides you with an interface like ChatGPT so you can reference custom models and you can reference different model in the same chat so I can say at Mistral and then as you could see here talking to Mistral so up top it developed the original response using uh, Llama 3 and now I'm talking to Mistral um, taking into account the previous response how could I enhance it, improve it or enhance it? And then it's going to take a little bit of time just to deploy Mistral locally on the GPU. So it took about 30 seconds, I would say. And then it's put out a number of them um, enhancements that we should be doing. I would say number three provides a more enhanced response than mistral but again that was just to enhance and then we're going to be exploring after it finishes the response a bit how could we question um, different documents it finished the response with eight amendments that we should be doing or we should be um, enhancing however I, don't, I didn't really like the response of uh, mistral so in order to give it the benefit of the doubt I will copy um, the same exact prompt and put it here and it's going to be still talking to Mistral so I'm going to press in enter and let me see what Mistral gives in and as you can see here I finished the response and it really provided I would say um, a detailed response more than Llama Llama provided a very good response I'm not gonna lie but Mistral 0.3 which is the latest model in May 24 it provided um, a much more detailed uh, response so now let's explore how we could make the best use of the document feature in here so if you go to workspace and then you go to documents and then you can press on the plus icon on the right and then click here to select documents and here I'm just going to be adding my RSCS APC submission which I submitted quite close to um, three years ago and I'm going to be adding a tag to the documents so let me call it my and then underscore RICS underscore APC underscore submission and that's it and as you can see here so it definitely has uh, the name a name and then a tag that I could be tagging it and we'll see together so if I go to new chat and then I'm going to be selecting Llama 8 bit model and then I could be referencing the document here by putting the hashtag you can have multiple collections um, you can have a specific document or a group of documents so let me refer that and then I say um, from the document provided give me an example of data management so it gave me the response that I've written uh, I could I could ask it any question um, how could I enhance that response the enhancements from Alama's point of view is as follows that it added some points I could take it up a notch by saying that by referencing um, Mistral and say that what what do you think about the previous response now how could we enhance it and as you can see here it took less than a minute to provide uh, a response and definitely we could enhance the prompting um, I just wanted to give you a sense and um, about the art of the possible uh, definitely the prompt itself can be enhanced in here it can also be enhanced in here and then that one is just um, a dummy file 
which is uh, representing my summary of experiences for the RSS APC. Um, and finally, in this section, we can have a look at the settings themselves. So definitely there could be enhanced system prompts, such as uh, giving uh, the system an order or uh, an instruction about sticking to construction field only, a specific set of references or standards for, uh, for different countries and the likes. Uh, definitely here an API could be given for OpenAI, uh, that is the local host uh, provided by Ulama in here. So that is default, that can be edited if it's going to be altered for any, for any reason. Uh, the models, um, you can download models here by just referencing the name of the model and if you're not sure how to do that you can click uh, here and it will give you uh, the name of the models so for argument's sake if you want to download 53 you can click on that one and then if you want to have the 3.8 billion for argument's sake you can say 53 and then you can copy the name here and put it here and it's going to download it for you um, and then there is a lot of different settings that you can tweak in order to make the experience much more lively. Um, there's also audio recognition here, which can be done using a web API. Um, and here's the, vo the voices as well. They can be edited however you please. The text image generation itself can be altered and can be tweaked. Um, I have downloaded here lava so that i can query the images i've downloaded the 13 billion parameter model um, and if you go to uh, the chats you can also delete all the chats import them or export them uh, the account here i'm pretty certain that this is this is useless because at the end of the day it's running locally on your machine if you wish to do the computing online then you'll have to enter the api keys i didn't do any APIs or didn't use any APIs here because I wish to run them locally and then whenever you finish the settings you press and save and in this video we have explored how we can deploy the open OBI system locally on our machine for personal use or for organizational use one has to keep in mind that docker desktop is for free to use if you're going to be using it personally but if it's going to be deployed in an organizational environment, then there's going to be two major costs for it. The first one is the initialization costs, and the other one is the subscription costs. So there's about £132 um, for initial costs for that piece of software, plus there is another cost for subscription per user per month that has to be kept into account. So speak with the IT department before you deploy Docker desktop in an organizational environment. This video is a part of a series that we are drafting specifically to give our audience some sense of the art of the possible so that they can deploy open source AI tools locally on their machines or within organizational environments. At APC Mastery Path, we are trying to harness the power of AI tools to provide bespoke teaching and mentoring packages to RICS APC candidates. Do not forget to visit our website www.apcmasterypath.co.uk to get a sense of the wide range of services that we provide, the AI tools that we are trying to develop and harness the power of, and the latest blog posts that we write for the wide benefit and use of the RSS APC candidates. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Hope you find it useful and catch you in the next one. Cheers guys.